Hello everyone. We're now on week three already of painting berries and leaves. And this week I'm going to demonstrate painting loosely and without drawing first. Um, this actually is one of my favorite techniques, but I realize that it's not suitable for everyone and not everyone's going to like it as much as I do. But it's always worth giving it a go because as much as I like it and maybe you don't, it's a good learning curve because um, of the way watercolour works and how it will show you how versatile it can be. Um, and you will learn from, from actually painting without drawing and hopefully even get, get to like it. Um, I've been given some lovely rose hips again, but nice bigger, big ones. And the ones I've got actually in the oasis in front of me are, are larger than that. And lots of different tones of color in them. And so um, thanks very much, John and June for those. Um, they do have some detail, but I'm actually going to try to ignore this to a large extent and endeavour to capture just the essence of these lovely things. Um, and I'll be working with quite a lot of water and allowing the paint freedom to move and to blend. So if you have a go at this, um, Allow your composition to um, dictate itself to a little, to, to an extent, um, because it really is a matter of allowing the paint to flow and seeing what you end up with. You hopefully will end up with something that you really like, but do ensure that you start with your focal point and that you create quite a good focal point and one that has just a little bit more detail maybe than anything else and, and work from that and you should end up with quite a nice picture. Try to start off, especially if you're a beginner, start off small because it can get weak if you keep going and going. Um, so start off small but obviously those with more experience can fill the page and have a lovely time with, with this technique. Um, not too many colours actually using today. May pop a bit of red as well, I'm not sure, but I've got the alizarin out anyway. So that's that. Um, and these are some smaller ones that you can see, but the little um, the little leaves on the end of each each rose hip is you know really quite important if you can find something that you know has something like that. It's always going to add lovely interest and really nice to, to try and get those shapes. Right, so blank page. Um, and I'm going to start with what I can see in front of my subject first, which is in fact, if you were looking at this, you can see the little leaves first. So they're actually going to go in to begin with. I'll try to um, start and finish, obviously, because I don't have that long. Um, I have to get this done within sort of half an hour, 40 minutes, because that's the camera doesn't take any more than that. And anyway, I think you'd start glazing over if I made it go on any longer. So I will try to start and finish, but if I have to stop then I'll talk you through what I'm doing. So I've used the, I've got the, the, the dark green mix with the cadmium and and the um, Payne's Grey. Sorry if I keep stopping and starting with my speech. I have got to concentrate today because I haven't got a drawing to, to help me out. So it's a matter of just drawing in your little shape, but being quite wet because you don't want a hard line appearing around that 
lovely shape. You just want a nice little free shape to work on. And you can always lift off if you need a little bit of light back in there, or I've got some alizarin out. I can see a little bit of red in, so while it's still damp, I'm just dropping a little bit of red in. I've got a very large brush, it's a 10, but it's got a brilliant point. So that's going to work quite well for me. And I'll, I'll probably use this same brush all, all the way through. But you know, you, you use your favorite brush. And if you like, you could use the um, sword brush for, for these. So I'm using that dark green color, but also dropping a little bit of sepia in on the top for the depth to get the dark. Some of them are really quite dark. And letting that point do some of the work for me. Good idea to maybe do a little 10 minute sketch before you start and I do mean a painting not just a drawing when I say sketch it's a little 10 minute painting time yourself just to paint um, something in 10 minutes that way you'll not press you'll, you'll hopefully not be under too much pressure because it's just a practice but at the same time you won't fiddle with it You'll keep going because you know you've only got a limited time to in which to work. So that's always a good uh, way to, to get yourself into it, to, to lose painting to start with. Now I've got two, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's another one but it's hiding behind here. But it's creating a lovely shape for me. I'm really liking doing this. And now my colors are going to start blending one into another a bit because I'm touching, um, touching the wetted already painted area, which is fine by me. It's going to look good and I'm going to try not to touch too much. Now I've got to pop the berry on behind here. It's a nice big rose hip. So I, if I want to keep control and not allow it to blend, then I don't touch what I've already painted but if I do want a little bit of blending to happen then I touch it and some of it will bleed into my berry which will bring it all together and make it a nice loose painting. So you've got to look at this technique quite a bit differently to the way we normally paint. It's going to have a looser, freer end result and I'll hopefully get Free is still in a minute by allowing some to bleed into the background. A little bit more depth there. The um, transparent orange is an absolutely amazing colour. It does have a lot of life. So if you've got that, then that's a good one to use for a berry like this. So I'm not going to touch any of that anymore at the moment. I've got some neutral tint here just to put in that little dot in that little dark center. There also is a little bit of red in the center here. 
So I'm not going to touch that anymore, but what I, what I can do if at the end I feel it's gone flat or it needs anything, then I'll, I'll allow it to dry and I'll try and touch it up then, but not a good idea necessarily to touch it now. It's a little shabby stalk. Okay, so that one I'm not going to allow to, to blend or, or bleed into the background, but I'm going to paint another one now. And I may actually just have to turn this around. I've only got two up here, so I'm turning it around to make it look go the other way. You can even paint the same one again if you turn it, make it go a different direction. Right, okay. So let's see what happens if I paint another one up here. Letting the brush do the work a bit. Allowing that to make the shape for me. I'm sorry if my hand gets in the way sometimes, that's unavoidable because the camera is over the top. I hope you've enjoyed painting your berries and leaves this, this month so far. It certainly is less of a challenge than all the perspective that we were getting into, I feel. But if you still want to continue with that sort of thing, that's absolutely fine. As long as you're happy painting, I don't mind what you paint. And actually, you may prefer to use this technique with leaves rather than the berries, especially if you can't get hold of any um, any berries. Leaves may be a bit more forgiving for you. This is such a lovely shape. I can get quite excited by a leaf or something like this that's such a lovely shape. But I'm actually going to get some raw sienna on my brush and I'm going to start popping in just a little bit of background here and allowing some of this to float away. You'll find it quite scary to begin with and you won't want to lose maybe something that you've painted that you, you really love, but actually you'll still see it underneath. And when it dries, it's going to look really nice. This is something that watercolour really, really does like. It likes just moving around and doing its own thing. Well, actually it likes doing a lot of things, but this is something that works really well with watercolour other than, you know, acrylic or, or other paints. If you want a nice loose painting, watercolour is the medium to go to. Okay, so I've started to pop in a little bit of background here. Now I need to create the berry shape. So I'll be working on a wet, wetted area to an extent. But I've got a lo lovely strong mix of my orange there which I'd allowed to dry, because that will make it lovely and strong for me to use. Now this is going to blend in the, in the water.
dropping a little bit of water back on there to create some texture, make it a little bit looser. And when that's dry, I can pop another one of these little leaf things in. Indicating some stalk. Dropping a bit more green in here. So that one I've got to completely leave to dry. Let it blend away a little bit more. So that's indicating what might be going on in the hedgerow where you don't see things very clearly. And it's all looking a little muddled. But the star of the show is still sitting up and looking quite happy. So I'm going to pop another one in now. Because th three will look better than two. Odd numbers always work better. That one's turning back on itself. Dropping a little bit of red in there. I'm trying to speed up a bit now because I don't want to run out of time and I was going to try not to stop this time. So I'm going for the cadmium yellow, which is a lighter colour and so therefore adding variety here. Not such a large one either. Touching there so that it blends down, creates nice shape. Perhaps you can understand why I say not to get too um, widespread or large with your first initial painting because it can become quite weak if you're not careful. If you keep going, so try to, to begin with anyway, try to keep it fairly, fairly small and compact that way you won't lose definition where you need to keep it and it will not become a weak picture but I'm just going to pop a bit of leaf in They're very, very dark, but I'm not going to make them so dark. Now I've got to think about the way my composition's going. I think I'll go that way. So putting that central vein in first always helps because it's um, creating the position that the leaf is sitting in. 
it's got a lizard in it. It's So I'm bringing the colours up nicely. Letting that edge fade away. But maybe being a little bit more detailed with this edge of this leaf. Maybe another one here, partly hidden behind the one in front. Can you see as it's drying, I'm getting some lovely blended blends there and some lovely tones, very nice colors appearing. So one more leaf, I think, maybe going this way. So just let the colours blend together and create nice shapes for you. I love that bit. And you don't see, with this technique, you don't see what you've got until you allow it to dry. So you must allow it to dry without touching it anymore. Lay, lay your little shapes and colours down, let it all dry and fix it up at the end if you feel it needs to be changed in any way. Only touch where you want it to blend. I'm speeding up now. But obviously you can work a lot slower than me. You don't have to work this quickly. But hopefully you've understood the technique. And hopefully you'll come up with some nice blends and some nice shapes. Try to allow the detail to go as much as you can apart from in the focal area. Another thing that can happen on here is maybe a little bit of splattering, which will give another dimension and it will actually help to bring it all together a little bit. If it goes on to a wetted area, that will be a soft splatter. If it's gone on to a dry area, it'll be a hard splatter. Now that needs to dry before I can see what I've got and so that I can then decide on if I want to, to bring anything up. So I'll show you one or two other things. Um, I did a little practice shot just before I started. It didn't take me a minute. 
but I just wanted that one to dry a bit more so that you could see the various shapes that appear when it is dry. And actually, I don't want to do anything to it. I really don't. I could splatter it, but actually, I don't want to. I don't want to to change it at all, um, because this is this is what I was looking for. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep it loose. I wanted to loosely indicate um, the subject, and I think if I touch it more, I'm just going to start overworking it and getting away from my original idea. So. I'm actually not going to touch that one. But because I hurried the demonstration, maybe I would need to touch that one a bit more. We'll see when it's dry. Um, here's another one that I did earlier um, with some branch and popping a different coloured background in to indicate maybe more leaf and, and so on, allowing some of it to, to bleed away. But there's the focal, focal point, which you've got to always... Um, create maybe first and then work from it okay I was quite pleased with the way that one turned out um, for those who are more experienced and done this before and want to really get a bit of a challenge um, maybe you you would end up with, with something like that um, various colors in the background don't forget always to leave some white paper where necessary and don't overwork and just allow these these lovely colors to blend and create some lovely shapes for you but it does kind of um, imitate what you see in in the hedgerow because some things are eaten you know one thing is on top of another it's all a bit of a muddle so if you create a nice muddle then you've got a good picture I also wanted to take on even bigger a challenge for, and so for those who want to still can. Um, I painted, not in a loose way, this iris seed head and enjoyed painting it. But then I thought it would be a huge challenge to try to, to paint that one um, loosely. So not ever done that before. So I had a go and I was really pleased with what I did. And I prefer it actually to the, the, the more detailed one. I didn't blend um, outwards into the background. I just painted this without drawing, allowing the blends to happen within the subject and painted all the little leaves and things on as well. So that sort of thing can be quite a challenge, but actually not as much of a challenge as you think it would be once you get started it's um i really enjoyed it okay so i'm just going to stop dry off the one that i've done and see if i do need to touch it up at all there we are um haven't done anything apart from dry it with a hair dryer which i would avoid if i were you but if you have more time oh good i've done this in just about half an hour brilliant that's uh Tech team will be very pleased with me. Um, yes, yeah, so if you if if you actually um, work to a shape, it's going to help, so that you don't go off at a tangent and start creating a, a a weaker picture. But I'm actually quite happy with what happened here. I don't feel I really need to touch it up at all. I'm always a bit loath to do it because I think I'm going to start making the eye go to places where I, you know, I don't want it to. So I'm, I'm actually going to leave it. Um, so I hope you'll find something that you would like to, to paint loosely this way. And it really does make a difference once it is contained within a, within a mount. Lovely way to make lots of little cards as well, perhaps. So... Please have a go with painting loosely and without drawing. Um, drop your colours onto the paper rather than to sort of push it into the paper as well when you when you're working and and allow allow the paint to to um, sit on the top rather than to be pushed into the paper. You'll get more vibrancy and not pushing it into the paper will allow the paint to blend more easily than if you've created. Um, 
you know, a, a patch where you've pushed it into the paper. And um, try not to touch it until you've finished. So that's another big tip. And keep everything to a minimum, really, and as, as little touching as you possibly can and try not to get carried away with the detail and allow it to dry before you judge it. Okay, so next week um, I'm going to demonstrate drawing with a pen onto an already painted background. Um, drawing with the pen, then painting on top of an already painted background. And so it will still be leaves or, or flowers, um, leaves or berries. If you want to do leaves this week, as I said, then, you know, find some nice colourful leaves and, and you may find leaves easier. Okay, so have a good week, everyone, and um, have some fun. Bye-bye.